lastly, before I leave, can I just get your thoughts? Because a lot of people are saying I shouldn't have any opinion about black men or the black community because I date outside of my race. Um, do you feel like I can't defend black men or criticize black men whilst I'm dating a white man? What does that go do anything? You've got black brothers, do you know what I mean? Your exactly. dad's black. Sounds silly. Um, okay. Hey, beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I am Mimi of Just Doing Me, and today I've got my brother, Abby, joining me. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Yeah, so um, basically, I wanted to have this discussion after a fight that I witnessed over the weekend at a pretty high-end club in the city called Madison Rooftop. Um, and after that, I really, really felt quite strongly about seeing two groups of black men fighting. And I put out a post on YouTube that has received, you know, very dis divisive opinions, a lot of backlash. I've been accused of racism, self-hatred, uh, ignorance, the whole works. Um, even at the time I put out the video, I did say that I was going to film this, um, put out the statement. I, filmed, I said I was going to film this video to talk about the matter um, in deep and at length. And obviously, I wanted to have my brother to give the black male perspective. So we've kind of spoken briefly about the topic, but we didn't record it. So I'm glad we're sitting down again to record it. So my statement over the weekend um, actually, I think it was on Monday, it was basically that in the fight for racial justice and racial equality, black men are the weakest link. Now, Abby, is that like, are you familiar with the saying black men are the weakest link? Um, no, nah, I haven't heard it before, to be fair. Um, it's quite an interesting, so I say, term or phrase. Um, it would be good for you to tell me more about what that means. Or okay, what perfect, means. because I honestly feel like a lot of people that were quick to jump, quick to comment, had also never heard that phrase before. And I have heard it quite a lot over the last few years, but I really felt like I hadn't given it its due credibility until I witnessed what I witnessed that weekend. And what it's basically saying is that when it comes to fighting against racial inequality and racial injustices, black men, specifically black straight men, tend to fight for themselves as a group. They're fighting for the way they are treated. They're fighting for the persecutions they face. They don't really fight for the other members of their community and try to achieve equality as a whole. And in comparison, when black women fight for racial equality, we fight for everybody. We fight for black men, we fight for black gay men, we fight for black gay women, we fight for black women. But when it comes to those other groups, their um, issues that they're being persecuted on and the negative stereotypes and the hurtful things and injustices that the other groups face, we often find that not only are black men silent, but also sometimes black men are actively contributing to the persecution or to the injustices that these other groups are facing. So your thoughts now? Does that make a little bit more sense? Um, I think, I, I, I don't necessarily see it that way. Um, I went to the Black Lives March um, a few weeks back in the, in the early stages. And are you able to speak up? I saw all types of people. I went to the Black Lives Matter march on, um, towards the American embassy, and I, I, saw, I saw all types of people. And I guess um, it, it, what you're saying requires a bit of context, I think, yeah. to kind of really um, highlight the yeah. message that the person or the people behind um, yeah. thinking um, are trying to kind of get across. And I think maybe in kind of micro circumstances, yes, there will be many instances when you look from a kind of micro view. Um, from a macro view, um, I don't know if I have enough of an opinion to be able to give that. But obviously, there's, this comes from a place um, where people feel that way. So there must be reasons why they feel that way. Yeah. Um, and I think um, from what I can imagine from that, it's just with black women are saying, look, we, 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 we support you, we support black men, we fight for rights, but we don't necessarily see the same level of, of support um, mm -hmm. when it comes to us. And um, without necessarily 
knowing the individual or the experiences that the particular individuals that I have had, um, it's difficult to make that judgment. But for something that I can think of straight away could be um, maybe like Tanya said, but you know I mean, um, uh, when you become successful, you leave your ass and go for a white girl. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think something that black women are generally unhappy about in, in, in general is that, um, and I know it's, it's a great generalization, but there's a lot of black men who kind of, if you want to say date outside the race. For me, personally, I feel like you can date who you want. Yeah. Um, but I think that definitely has a reflection and that has an impact um, on, on, on kind of what, on kind of how um, black, um, on the psyche or how black women feel that black men generally feel about them. Um, mm -hmm. And I think in, in many cases, um, like the examples you gave me, whilst I've never come across those, I don't doubt they've happened. Um, and I can even imagine them happening fairly regularly, um, like someone saying, um, who's speaking to the one with the weave, or um, those kind of put downs. Um, so the, the audience aren't familiar yeah. with the conversation we've already had. So they're not familiar, but so I'm going to give the context that you said that without, you can't really frame um, mm. your opinion. So before I go on to the fight, because we'll definitely be addressing the fight, but I just want people to understand it's not just black men fighting in public that I feel is, you know, putting us at a disadvantage when it comes to the bigger fight. But what you mentioned already about black men when they become successful, and not even just when they become successful, there seems to be more of a narrative now that other races of women are considered more attractive than the black women, or they are prized more, or it's a social status that um, the black man receives when he's associated with these women. Whereas, you know, the black woman in, in terms of her looks, in terms of her attractiveness is often put down and not just by other races, but quite a lot by black men, which actually in turn allows other races to also perpetuate, you know, the notion that black women are not attractive, black women have attitudes, black women are not as worthy or as deserving of love as the white women or the white counterparts and it's not all black men this is never going to be like every single black man does it but i think when you get to a point where there are enough black men doing it we can say yes it is a problem within our community yes it is a problem that we barely see like dark-skinned black women you know with black features you know in prominent positions in the beauty industry in the um movie industry in the music industry i can name probably 20 or 30 black male rappers right now of dark skin but can i name three dark skin female musicians that have achieved similar success as their black counterparts no even the music videos who the black men choose to portray as the leads as the video vixens oftentimes it's not women that look like themselves Oftentimes, I see black men on Twitter, social media. Was it not ASAP Rocky that said black women of darker skin should not be wearing red lipstick? You know, was that um, black basketball player that kept coming at Lupita Nyong'o for how dark her skin is, saying she's not attractive? Sometimes it's just like, look, if you don't like black women, that's okay. If we're not your preference, that's okay. But by bashing us and putting us down so publicly, you not only crush us, you also give other races the ammunition they need to crush us. Like Malcolm X said, black women are the least protected, least defended. And I think at a certain point, black men have to own up to the part that they are playing. Um, when you mentioned that um, black women, um, they don't like black women, um, just let me highlight for you there that um, Beyonce is a black woman, versus a light-skinned black woman. So yes. black is actually quite a varied um, race when it comes to shades and colour. So I think their issue there, or the issue you're highlighting, is more to do with dark skin. And I think yeah. we've covered colour in the previous video, and that, yeah. I mean, there's no doubt there's a lot of work to do um, on that. Um, so I think that's more where the, where, where the issues are. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think, I think as based on, these are things you're already familiar with, with covered in colourism, so I don't want to go into that. I think people are entitled to kind of like um, who they want um, or who want their, they have their preferences. And I don't want to talk about preferences again, but we do, we do know that there's so many influences that 
have an impact on those preferences. Do you know what I mean? In, in, in yeah. society. Um, one thing I will not agree with, though, is the public bashing. I think that guy had a bit of a backlash against it, against it, because actually, well, it was, Nyong'o is actually a very beautiful woman. I think I said this on a previous video with you. Yeah, yeah, she is, Abby. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't black men backlashing. It was black women, and it was well noted and well documented that when these things happen, when other black men bash black women, mm. black men in the public limelight are silenced. Yeah. We are the ones constantly defending ourselves and saying, this is not acceptable, like who you like, just don't involve us. Black men rarely ever come out and publicly. Like, um, the Sky, the, um, what's his name? The one that's in Skywalker, the black guy. Um, John Boyega. Yeah. Has been unapologetically loud in his praise and, you know, protection of black women but it is something that we rarely ever see. I rarely ever see black men say, hang on a second, no, you need to check that attitude and check that mentality because you're directly contributing to the oppression of our women. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, I feel like it's also a statement of blackness as well to, to go that far to show that support um, because I think it's easy um, sometimes when you feel like um, you're, you're not the one being victimized or you're not being oppressed to stay quiet. Mm. Um, and, I, and I guess that's something that is obviously happening here and definitely needs a, a lot of work. But I think there's something in the inner psyche we, that, that, that we have to deal with as a community when um, black males um, feel like comfortable, feel comfortable, first of all, being able to kind of bash black, bash black females in, in that sense. Now, one thing that we can also have to kind of take into account here is that the reason they're bashing them can also have, on, on, there could be other reasons. It, could, it may not just be because of their shade. Shade might be a reason for abuse. Um, not that I'm trying to justify it, but um, the, the, these things kind of, there's, there's lots of anecdotal um, um, aspects to those individual experiences. Um, you, like you say, Snoop Dogg, when there was that lady in America, um, I think she's a friend of um, Oprah. Um, yeah. Talking about the black member, about um, when he died, mm. about his um, sexual way, he, although he was acquitted. Yeah. Listen, he was a racist. He wasn't, was he acquitted or did he settle? He settled, whatever. He was didn't go, yeah, yeah. Um, whether or not you've committed the crime. And the way Snoop Dogg went out at her, at her. Mm. Um, and he came out to apologise because you know I mean? a few people, sort of like a pop daddy, came out and actually called him out on it. And he, you have to respect Snoop Dogg for having the humility to then come back and actually apologise. And I think we're seeing instances where, yeah, these things are happening. Obviously, it's a bit too prevalent that black men feel so comfortable being able to do that. But we're also seeing examples of where black men are calling other black men out and saying, actually, this is not right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even if you're aggrieved, um, doing it so publicly and doing it in such a manner as to kind of put them down and humiliate them is probably not the best way to approach it's it. To handle but, it. But the comfort within, the comfort to be able to just go out and do that in a way is, 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 is kind of scarily shocking. Um, yeah. But it's also very normal. Um, and I think, yeah, maybe there is a lot of work to do, to do around that. But I think to, to say, go as far as saying the Black Men of the Week is linked, it's probably a bit of a stretch. Now, I'm a guy, so maybe yeah. in a way I'm being biased there, yeah. um, but there's probably definitely a, a lot of work to do. But I also think that it's very easy to highlight and focus on the negatives um, and the positives in general getting forgotten in many ways. Um, but yeah, I think we'll have to see what we do with the discussion around, around the fight. But I think there's lots of yeah. out there who are doing positive things, but unfortunately... Yeah, and honestly, sorry, like, sorry to cut you off because I'm no, trying right. to make sure we push through this. No one has ever, like, I personally don't believe there are not black men doing positive things, and I'm going to give some really good examples I've seen recently. Um, Stormzy pledging 10 million towards Black Lives Matter causes and, you know, the black youth over the next few years. I didn't even know Stormzy had that kind of money. Like, that is a big statement. You know, and I'm so proud of him. And because of what he's done, the BBC have also now placed an additional 10 million to match that. You know, like we see the person who really brought um, what happened to George Floyd to the forefront was a man named Sean King. Do you know Sean King? 
Sean King um, is is usually vocal. I follow him, so I see. I see yeah. So she's actively, yeah. He's actively, <laughs> yeah. like leading it. leading the change and being the voice for racial injustice, fight against police brutality. So don't get me wrong when I'm saying like you know black men are the weakest link. I'm not detracting from the good work that some black men are doing. I'm saying that in terms of the fight and how hard black women are fighting. What black men are doing, there is definitely a lot of room for improvement. And I'm going to give you examples so we can actually frame this argument. Okay, so Black Lives Matter, you know, a lot of that was police brutality, a lot of black men being killed. Obviously, there are black women being killed by the police, but in large part, it's a lot of black men being killed by the police, a lot of black men being harassed and stopped unnecessarily by the police, a lot of black men being incarcerated at shocking, you know, um, disparity to white counterparts. So black women have been at the forefront of that fight. We have never said that is not our fight. It does not directly affect us. We're not going to march. You are our brothers, you are our sons, you are our husbands. We have been right there leading. A lot of the Black Lives Matter protests were led by women, organized by women, promoted on social media by women. The campaign Pull Up for Change was led by two black women. I don't know if you're familiar with what that is, but that is the um, call for corporations, large corporations, to show us the percentage of black people and ethnic minorities they have at the top of their board in, in leadership management and at the top of their board of directors. You know, these, these calls and these campaigns are being led by black women. Blackout Day, encouraging us to mute ourselves for the day so the world can like understand black, black Lives Matter, led by black women. Black Pound Day, the initiative to support black owned businesses and the push for that, again, led by black women. When it comes to actively fighting this fight, <coughs> black women are so present and at a significantly larger rate, I feel, than black men, you know? And I feel like when it comes to our fights, the things that affect black women on a large scale, the fact that, you know, black women are four times as likely to die in labor than white women are. The fact that black women are often, you know, described as being aggressive, having too much attitude, you know, or our looks are usually dehumanized or belittled. I feel like when it comes to these issues that plague us, give us self-esteem issues, give us mental health issues, and cause us not to be considered as equal as our white counterparts, I just don't see enough black men being ready to ride out the way black women are ready to ride out for your causes. I spoke to a black guy yesterday and he said, well, it's our lives, it's our lives that are our stake for black men. For you guys, it's just your looks. It's trivialized. Our struggle and our fight is trivialized. Whereas no matter how little the black man's struggle is, black women are there to fight everybody and anybody. Um, that's interesting that yeah. someone would um, say we're fighting for our lives and you're fighting for your looks. Um, I couldn't disagree anymore. I think that's a simple and stupid statement to be, to be frank. Um, I see where you're coming from. And I, I think like in, in any struggle, in any society, um, I always believe that women are the essence and men are the power. Um, and clearly, from what you described, women are showing their essence. Do you know what I mean? They're driving, but men are not necessarily responding in from what you're saying. Um, now, I'm going to talk about a different view. I see a, comp I see a kind of different bubble, because I think it's easy to get caught up in a bubble. Um, you talked about, um, what's it called? Stormzy contributing 10 million, which I think is fantastic. Stormzy has always been vocal. In fact, this time he's been less vocal because mm. you don't want to kind of end up killing his career, basically. <laughs> so I think he's been very clever. While he went marching, he's just made sure not to become the centerpiece of this. Um, like John Boyega. Like John Boyega. But John Boyega also, off the back of that, got Netflix deals and got support exactly. from Lucas Films. Exactly. What you've got to realize, but Lucas deals and deals are linked to Africa. But the loot bar, which is a good thing, don't get me wrong, because yeah. Netflix have also been great in the movement. They've contributed $100 million, $100 million into black-owned banks, which mm -hmm. essentially, with the, um, with, um, with the fractional banking system and the way it works, means that that would create wealth 
for black families when that was right. a lo- um, given out in loans. Um, but also from Lucas Films, um, George Lucas is married to a black woman. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So Highly educated, this kind of support woman. was going to come instantly because they were coming from, essentially they're coming from allies, people who were already allied because of also their links to black women, also just because, from, because they're not defined by bigotry mm. and racism and prejudices. Because uh, you don't have to manage a black person to be not racist or prejudiced yeah. or whatever. Or to be an activist. Or to be an ally. Um, but you, there's, a, there's a gentleman, one of the richest black guys in America, who paid the fees for every single person at a university. I think it's Morehouse last year when they, when they finished. So he did the talk and he did that. And I feel like black women are not just about the movement. It's about the actions that change mm. black people's lives and improve it. Mm. What he essentially did there was alleviate them of over forty thousand dollars a debt. Mm. That's a strong move. He invested it tens is. of millions in that. And yeah. there are lots of other people who are doing similar things. Now, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn because of my business. Um, so I'm always connecting and I'm seeing lots of great stuff being done by black women. Um, mm. I've seen lots of great stuff being done by black men there. Um, so it depends on where you're looking. If I didn't go onto Facebook, the conversations are obviously very different. Um, what showcase is very different to what is being showcased on LinkedIn. Um, and also the individuals that you're dealing with and the levels of education and maybe their social mobility or the social status they have is also very different. Um, so the tone of voice in which you're speaking on LinkedIn or people on LinkedIn or even in the professional aspect, because essentially it's a social media, with a media platform with a tie, um, compared to Facebook where people feel like they can almost kind of speak as freely as they can almost, especially when they're within closed groups or sometimes within their private chats on WhatsApp. But I think, um, I think, yeah, there are, and I, this will be linked to when you talk about the fight later, um, yeah. black lives movement or not, there are people who are kind of see the vision and there are some people who are black but don't buy into the vision. They're not interested. That's not the level of thought and thinking and advancement they're at. They're more about a survival in the day to day. Um, they're not really looking to participate in any way from a personal level, from a financial level or from a social mm-hmm. level to contribute to that movement. Yeah. And so when we see the actions of individuals like this, being there, um, being kind of used to kind of, and almost in many circumstances, paint us. to paint, to yeah. paint and paint the whole movement, um, for me, that just doesn't cut it. Um, I, I think, no, that there's, there's work to be done, but I think there's also people out there who, just because they're black, doesn't mean they're actively trying to work and move that movement and try to better the lot of their community. Mm-hmm. Um, they're probably just more interested in themselves and also they might lack the education, the skills or even lack the vision to see a better picture for themselves. So their behavior and their actions will totally differ. Um, if people are under the influence as well, um, you could also say they've been taken by the spirits. So, <laughs> <laughs> so regardless of whether they're a member of the community or society, um, alcohol, especially spirits, um, have, a, have, a, have an impact on people. And I've seen probably the meekest, the softest, the most gentle, educated human beings turn to dragons uh, <laughs> after a few shots. So I think we, we have to put this in, in context as well. But um, yeah, I, I, don't know, I, I think, yeah, from the sound of what you said, there is, there is some work to be done. And um, I, think, uh, I think I mentioned this to you during the conversation saying, um, I used the terrorist example because one Asian person commits terrorism then everyone goes and asks the, the Muslim community, what are they doing mm. when, there's black on, when there's so-called black on black violence? Where there's violence between two men is the way I see it. Um, people say, what is black community do, doing? And even people in black community will say, why don't you stop the black on black violence? But actually, I've seen videos in Birmingham of Asian men fighting Asian men. Yeah. I've seen videos of white men fighting white men. Machete yeah. shootings. All of these happen across the board, but that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, this and I feel like I feel like, like by going into that, we're giving a lot of people the ammunition they need to not hold themselves and those black men and black men who feel like they can do what they want because white people get to do what they want. We're not holding them accountable. We all know that we have to work twice as hard to get half as much, that we have to like we can't get away with what our white counterparts can get away with we all know that is the system we all know we are actively trying to change the system but we cannot be marching and protesting and fighting you know and at the same time giving 
you know, white people and white mainstream media the ammunition that they need to basically say our cause isn't worthy, our cause is... I'm, 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 of, I'm of a completely different school of thought on that, basically. I think in a free society, people act as they please. I uh, think just because there's systemic racism, which means that black people have to be more careful. Mm. And I think as, as, as a community, as families will always educate their kids um, about how to behave if, if they come from a good background, um, or if their parents are good parents. But just because a society has systemic racial problems um, doesn't mean that people or everyone will overcompensate. Some people feel that they should be, have the right to express themselves and not live through that trauma that society imposes on them. Um, so with violence, I, I, don't, I, I, I think the I think the onus is on the on the media to not pull up these things in a okay. way that's negative. So I agree with you to a certain extent, but no, I think I have to just draw the line there. I do not like something. I had a very strong disagreement with black people about a few months ago, or last month, doing Black Lives Matter, is the idea that black men or black women should have to change the way we dress or less gangster to assimilate, change the music we listen to, change the way we speak. I do not believe, like, no, we should not be judged, you know, on how we choose to dress, how we choose to speak, but I find it very difficult to say we should not be judged on the way we choose to act or the way we choose to behave. Now, saying that what those black people do is not and should not be a, you know, direct reflection of me, I feel it's akin to when white people say, well, it's my ancestors that did slavery, that's really not my problem, or well, I'm not racist, like, I have nothing to do with what all those other racist people are doing. You know, there's a certain point where you have to say, no, you have to hold your community accountable. People were holding banners saying, white silence kills, but what about black silence? What does white silence kills mean other than white people need to step up, whether or not it affects them, whether or not they're detrimentally affected by it, we need them to step up and be allies for the cause because racism and social inequality is wrong. As black people, we can't just say criminality, violence, attacking each other is wrong, but it's not us that did it, so it's okay. I don't, I, I think in conversations like this, while um, things tend to get, get run down the line of blackness or ethnicity, I think these are conversations that should actually not have race in them. Um, to, to certain aspects, and I think it's just about people behaving well, not black people behaving well, because if a white person acted the same way, the highlights or the issues will not be highlighted with the same negativity. Mm. Um, and I think even black people tend to then kind of buy into that negative press and say, no, we should be holding these people together. I think it's just people in general, do you know what I mean? Um, and I think when we have to perpetuate this, when we say we're fighting ourselves, people fight each other, white people fight each other, black people, black people, people will fight, white and black, black will fight each other. All it is is two, two people fighting and the behavior is two people. Um, okay. I've, seen, I've seen all types of people act in the same way, but I think because of that kind of media kind of um, or the cycle that we have of black on this whole term of black on black violence, which has basically brought the racial entity into violence. Um, yeah. No other race have they said Asian and Asian violence, have they said white on white violence. Mm. So why is it that in the black community we have to put the, pre the prefix of black on black? It's just violence. It's mm. two people being violent to each other for whatever reason. And this I... level of violence uh, uh, happens across communities and within communities. I agree, I agree. Like we said this the other day, at the end of the day, people will fight with who they are in close proximity with. You're going to fight with the people you see every day. You're not going to go three hours out of your way to fight with a complete stranger. It's the people that are in the club with you, the people that like are at the barbecue with you that you're going to end up having disagreements with. But we cannot also, um, you know, not acknowledge the fact that even in a white setting like what it was at the weekend, a predominantly white setting, a predominantly white venue, the groups of black men there chose to fight each other. There were other races there that they could have fought with. Why is it that they chose to have this extremely violent altercation with each other? So, I mean, the reason why it's more likely to see these things in black communities is black communities are generally poor. They generally run down. They're generally underfunded. Um, people have no money. And when you have to live on your emotions, as Nan said, that's got forced to live on their emotions and their creativity. 
because generally they don't have access to the same level of money or the same level of resources to be able to build a solid and sustainable future within their yeah. communities. Yeah. And I think it's, it's easier to sell drugs, but also we have to we have to look at the music in itself. There are problems, yeah, and there, you, we can't point it all away to socioeconomic factors. Yeah. We can't point it all away to the media. Um, the media, music is part of media, and I think gun crime and drug dealing and violence right. and, and um, um, chauvinism, or if you want to call it, or calling women bitches and blah, 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 and putting women down as kind of being glorified by hip-hop Some aspects of hip-hop music, not all hip-hop music, is the of mo- that the, the, um, So maybe you can call it gangster hip-hop if you want to put it that way. Because Mo Beth, well, gangster music if you want to put it that way, but people like Mo Beth and, and good rap, but that's the one that people decide they to buy. It. And the people who decide to buy it are the majority of our communities, middle-class kids. <laughs> they don't want, because at the end of the day, people will make music themselves. And the people who are really making this music so is not the black people, they don't have the money. Yes, we're contributing, but actually the reason why these people become global superstars is because white people, middle class and working classes and upper classes are buying their music. Nobody is disputing that mm. white people do not run the music industry. Yeah. Accountability, we are disputing why our music is focused around such negativity and such violence and why that type of music is more mainstream than other rappers like J. Cole, who do mm. preach more of an affirming message, you mm. know, and we have to really take accountability here because we are the trendsetters of what is considered cool. Mm. We are the ones that said, unless you go to prison, you can't come out, or as long as you go to prison, that's when you're going to have the credibility to make rap music, that's when you're going to blow up, you know? I don't want to carry on, I don't actually want to carry on talking about hip hop because for me, Hip hop is a very small part of the problem. I feel like we have the right to express ourselves, you know, yeah. whatever way they want to, but we cannot also say that that does not perpetuate a lot of the and the way that we're Definitely perceived does. as a society. They think we're all gangster rappers. They think yeah. we're all criminals because of the music. It has a negative impact heavily, and that's why sometimes you go to a club and they'll say, um, I've, "I've heard bouncers say um, no hip hop." Yeah. <laughs> Let's say no, we don't black people, we don't, no hip hop. Do you know what I mean? Let's like, go on to this topic because you used to be an event promoter in, in Bristol. Yeah, yeah, and you you used to run Afro sort of nights or nights that tailored primarily. You did white as well nights, but you did Afro nights that tailored primarily to black um, audiences. What sort of challenges did you face when you're trying to put on a primarily black event? Well, there were students, so I think it made, because there were students, it made, it made things a little bit better. Um, but that's not to say that I haven't seen fights between groups of black students after a night out. But then I've also seen fights between groups of white students after a night out. Mm-hmm. But it, it's challenging. I'll be honest with you, even in London, when I do it now, that's guy that I speak to, I look after his venue. And he's just like, look, I don't want any black events. So he's a black man. Yeah. <laughs> because he's worried about, there's almost that stereotype. Well, yeah, black, yeah. Black, black events can cause problem strangely why but there's lots of also ones I've been to where I haven't even seen problems okay um, I guess let's not, the music. Let, yeah let's not um let's try and keep white people out of this because I think it's very easy to jump into your white people fight at parties white da, da, da. we're talking about our I think the one trying to highlight there is that it's not really about black or white or brown I think it's just people fight do you know what I mean yeah but now we're talking about the black community like, okay I have heard, and some a lot of my subscribers sent me messages saying that you don't even know. One of them said you don't. Her father was in the event industry, putting on concerts for these black rappers, and almost nine out of ten times at these sorts of events where black rappers, the pop music that is going on, would always end in fights, would always end in people attacking, you know, the artists trying to rob them of their jewelry, gun <laughs> violence a lot in America, you yeah. know, and that's why her black father left the industry because it, it was such a challenge to actually run a business as a black man catering to black music and the black community when almost all the time these events led to violence. We cannot yeah. say that there is not a correlation between black events and fights. And I don't think it's anywhere near white events. If you, if you look at how many percentage, like ratio, at mm. black events, we are far more likely to fight and it'd be serious violent fights than most white events. All right, I'm glad that you said the serious violence because what I wanted to kind of differentiate there was like, 
when I talk about fights, everyone fights. And yeah. what, it's about the level of violence in the fighting. Um, I think that seems to always be a bit higher at black events. Mm. And what you said about your friend's dad in the business, it's, it's true. Um, Look, is so solid. The reason they got banned from performing within the M25 because almost every event they put on, people were getting stabbed or shot. Mm. Um, and you still get events that happen in the UK where it might be majority black, where people will get stabbed. Um, Carnival, Notting Hill Carnival every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely Notting Hill Carnival. Um, people, people get stabbed. There's violence if you have a one million people in the place. No, pride. No, because people, pride events, this yeah. never happens. And pride has just as big a turnout, mm. you know, people in the streets for pride. And it doesn't equate to people losing their lives usually. It's, fact, what, one, of, one of the things as well, I think, is also the type and style of music. There are kind of forms of music which kind of bring out a level of aggression and attitude. Um, if you look at drill, for example, it seems like mm. all these drill rappers, it's based on violence. It's based on the rawest and darkest parts of living on the on in, in kind of underprivileged communities or, or on the streets or ghetto communities, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and I think this kind of music obviously brings out a darker aspect of the human of the human person. And this, okay. this obviously alcohol can um, can help to kind of uh, magnify that those things. So yeah, no, there is an issue uh, um, there. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is. I think it's a bit more over, um, it's a bit more over exaggerated. These problems are there, and there is probably a problem of violence. Um, I just want to be careful that we're not kind of using a huge magnifying glass on something that um, potentially is a problem um, and needs to be dealt with, but it's not as big of a problem as sometimes it can be made out to be, if you know what I mean. There's um, a tendency yeah. to focus on that when black yeah. people do wrong. There's a tendency to highlight it. Mm. as opposed to, you know, when we do well. We all know this. And it's not fair, but it does happen. So I would though ask you now, let's say as a, like that black venue owner that you said, he said he doesn't want certain music necessarily. And I feel like a lot of times they don't want certain music is because that's a PC way of saying they actually don't want the crowd, the crowd. that yeah, comes yeah. with that music. Now, what has happened at the rooftop Madison, my understanding is that this is a venue that is, there's usually black people, but it's predominantly white city, well-to-do people that go there. But due to Corona, people were able to just sort of book a table online. They weren't, they didn't have their usual guest list and, you know, promoters doing whatever they normally do. So there seemed to be a, a larger black crowd than would usually be there. Now, as the venue owner, if you see this, that you've been having a venue, successful nights, playing hip hop and R&B music, you know, mainstream music for years, white crowd, you've never had a problem. The first time you guys reopen with a, a, a large, I would say 50-50, the men there were black, you know, and it results in having that club has at least 20,000 pounds worth of damages over yeah. eight men arrested. Serious. Yeah. Crazy. It was mental. This wasn't yeah. just a little case of a little fight, you know. As a business owner, will you feel like, okay, there's no correlation between there being more black men suddenly at this event and this fight? Or will you say, actually, most of the white people that have been coming here for years never had a problem, but suddenly there is a problem? Yeah, yeah, no, obviously, um, two things, you're going to, if you're a business owner, that's going to reflect badly, obviously, on, you're going to see the correlation and say, well, we don't normally have this, so this is something that's happened because we've got a high a number of black people, black men, coming into our venue. Now, so from what I know, friends, at Madison, there's usually um, more females, it looked like there was two there were a lot, yeah, there were a lot more men. Yeah, and when you have a place with, and this happens anywhere, it's, it's a simple rule. If you ever go to a night where there's too many guys and not enough women, mm. guys will, some guys will get the women that are there and the rest will fight. <laughs> or they'll fight over the women. That's what if there's, no, if there's no the females, women. then guys, everyone goes unhappy generally. Yeah. Um, because the guys are more focused on trying to engage the females. But when there's very few females and only a few guys are getting the opportunity, the rest of the guys, all they have is to look at each other. Um, and before you know it... <laughs> Before you know, they're okay. throwing fish or throwing things at each other. Okay. 
So to me, that sounds a little bit like an excuse. I'm not saying it's not truth, but it sounds a little bit as an excuse for yeah. why these black men did what they did. Because oh, no, I'm not surely, excusing it. I'm just surely saying the white that. men there did yeah. not have as many women. And I didn't see them stabbing each other or throwing metal poles at each other. It was the yeah. exact same scenario. It was very violent. Groups. It was very violent. I think, I think it's just people that have no kind of sense. I, I, like I say, alcohol can be these problems, and I don't know what caused it, but to see that level of violence um, is never good. Um, and it, it's, it's not, it doesn't reflect well, unfortunately, on the, on the black community, um, because there's going to be an impact. There's black people who are going to be from a good background, who've probably got money and want to go in in the future. And this, this business is going to kind of try and be careful because of the experiences they've had. And you can't blame them, because at the end of the day, you let a few black guys into your venue and next thing you know, you're calling your insurance, you're calling the police, you're trying to replace expensive bits of, of is where... Is it racism is if they now change their policy? Well, it, it, it's only racism if the, if the policy that's changed is based on race. So it's hard to prove anyway. So basically, <laughs> they'll just change the music. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they won't turn the music because they, that music is what sells. They just won't let the people whose community this music comes from come in. Do you know what I mean? Because you have hip-hop nights with lots of white people and there's barely any fights. Mm. You have hip-hop nights with black people to a certain degree, <laughs> but clearly it seems to cause more issues. Um, it's partly the music, but it is, I think there's way more. We can see a video and we can pull out aspects, but we don't really know the real story. If these people knew each other before, if there was two guys in the toilet that had an argument, um, anything could have triggered those things, or if there was just too many guys and not enough girls, or they'll find ever a girl. Um, but either way, what, what you see there, those things kind of reflect well, um, especially when you put it in the context that it's in a well-to-do area in West London, Madison's, which is normally the kind of place that will host celebrities um, and kind of rich, wealthy, um, mostly white, but also um, Arabic, black, and German people. Because obviously, like, the wealthy Nigerians, wealthy Brazilians, wealthy Arabs yeah, are going to the space and frequent and them. And generally, what they get is kind of, they, they, know their, they know their crowd, and these people are not a problem to them, because these people yeah. have got money to buy the things. But when you get someone who's come from, I don't want to, I don't want to denigrate an area, um, mm. just, let's say, ship out, <laughs> ship out of London. <laughs> let me know, let me know you know an area, people sound cussing their ends, basically. Um, but just like, Basically, from, from a council of state, maybe sells drugs or whatever, used to fight in a foot their whole lives. Do you know what I mean? And can barely handle their alcohol, but they're wearing 5,000 pound Gucci shirts or 5,000. Yeah. 5, Louis Vuitton shirts or whatever. Louis Vuitton shirts. And looking their belts and all of these things. So yeah. automatically, it doesn't add up. People that have kind of lived that lifestyle generally don't have the money or don't. I don't know. I, I feel like they're just not, they, they don't know how to handle themselves in this environment in public and I feel like some people either refuse to accept that that's what it is or they aren't aware or they're not taught that actually not everything that you can do in your community that you can do in other people's community yeah yeah it's, it's not a good video and it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't show the black community in a good light in any way um but yeah it, I, I, th you... I think just to say that because of that video black men are kind of um, the weakest link um, will be drawing too much from from that. I think obviously you've highlighted a few other aspects. Yeah. Um, but I, I think in the general scheme of things, that that's that's a, that's like a blip. It's a spot. Okay. So I'm glad you said that because I want to start concluding and just really paint the picture that I always wanted to paint. Black men being the weakest link. That wasn't the first time I've heard it. And I have given a little credibility to it before, not that much. And I'll tell you why. A lot of the times um, when I've heard that, it has been black women being very vocal about the fact that black men do not defend black women and that black men um, often, you know, abuse or dehumanize or degrade black women. And that gives other people the ammunition mm -hmm. to do so. Now, obviously, this is a massive problem, but I'm really not going to lie on camera it doesn't hit me the way it hits a lot of black women. Because for me, I feel like where I don't, or I haven't, you know, dated black men um, predominantly, 
it, I'm not as offended or not as triggered by the fact that black men choose to date mixed race women or white women, da, 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 women or black men are not defending us. I obviously notice it. I obviously like decide I am, but for me, I'm just like, well, okay, I'm used to it. What I find and what really tipped me on this, you know, it's not just the violence, there are other issues, but what, why the violence really triggered me is I feel like if you're not going to actively be marching, you're not going to actively be calling for corporations to change, to donate, to be active leaders in this movement, you don't have to detract from it, you know? And I really feel like what those men did at the weekend at such a prominent venue that has now made news headlines, has now had several news outlets writing stories on it, now several videos of it on YouTube, what they have done has detracted from the Black Lives Matter movement that we're actually fighting for. When um, the Black Lives Matter protests were happening, we all knew what we were marching for. We're marching against police brutality, we're marching against racial inequality, we're ma marching against white privilege and white silence, you know, being used as weapons against us, you know, but there were those black men, I'm sorry to say it because I've watched the videos, those black men that resorted to violence, that were attacking police officers, and to be honest, probably went there not giving two craps about the cause, wanting to start fights. But what was on the news that night, it wasn't the peaceful march, it wasn't the message we were trying to get across, it's the fact that five black men were arrested and one police officer was in a hospital, and what they showed were the fights. We cannot, you know, say, when people move like this at such a sensitive time, it does not detract from the good work we're actually trying to do. It doesn't taint us with a brush. Unfair, yes it is, but if these men did this a year from now, I wouldn't really care too much. But on the back of Black Lives Matter, when they know we're fighting against the being viewed as thugs, aggressive, as being excessively um, violent, as Black Lives not mattering, you're giving these people the ammunition to say, well, Black lives don't matter to them, why should it matter to us? If we're going to kill each other, you know, why can't we kill them? You know, you're giving people the ammunition to say that the movement doesn't actually matter or to detract from the real message. I think the movement, whether or not black people fight each other, um, has nothing to do with getting a level of equality. Um, people will disagree for various reasons there'll be violence, but that should, have, should not be a reason why they don't deserve equality regardless of what impression someone has. Um, also, just because someone's black doesn't mean that they're actively subscribing to a movement. Um, the movement itself is kind of, it's pretty free-flowing. It's about trying to get equality and, and justice um, yeah. for, for black people. Um, yeah, that, that is, that's, not, that's not good. When you put a mirror against that, it's not a great reflection. Um, but I think the movement is way bigger and way more powerful than that. Um, that I, I don't think any, if anyone should use that as their argument as to why BLM shouldn't happen or or that that's or why yeah why BLM shouldn't happen. Then I think that's um, um, unfortunate. One thing I will add in there though is yes, there were some violences in, in the Black Lives Movement, but it was largely peaceful. I think it's very easy to kind of kind of racialize those aspects in, in a way. But I think we, should, we need to see less violence in the black community anyway, there's no doubt. Um, those, those videos don't do anything, anything good. But I think one thing that's so easy to see straight away is just the blackness of the people, rather than the fact that actually it could just be two people who could have had a fight for any particular reason. Mm. Now, I don't like that. Um, I'm not, I, don't, I don't like violence. Um, I don't subscribe to it. I'm not going to try and justify that the upbringing gives them the right to act in that manner. I think yeah. you should know you should know as a human being generally we know what's right and wrong um within reason and i think when you go to an environment even the ambience of a space like that should let you know how you're supposed to behave the yeah. medicine would not be laid out even the vibe that would have been in there would never have been set up in a way that would encourage violence yeah um, so these people have brought their inherent violence that they developed through their through their life experience and okay. actually brought out to, to the fore and kind of expose their communities in, in a negative light. And unfortunately, like, like you're trying to highlight, it's going to have a negative impact on other black people coming to that venue without a shadow of a doubt. Um, yeah, definitely. They're going to say no hip hop as in hip hop people. They'll play hip hop music. They'll have your Chris Brown performing in there. 
because yeah. those are not your normal black people. Those are the rich, wealthy so, ones that will win their people. They'll have the other in there. <laughs> do you believe? Do you believe that's where it will stop? Then that it will only that something like that that has happened is only going to stop at that club changing its policy to limit black people. We don't oh, no. something like that will have a wider impact. No, I think I think you'll have a wider thing. And I'll be honest with you, and this is unfortunate. People will see that video online if it's online, and all they will say is, "Look at those animals. Look when it was the London riots." You know why people? You got people on the races who, who generally probably the mass who say, "Yeah, they're all animals. Get rid of them." Do you know what I mean? Like those comments are prevalent, and those yeah. kind of videos how give them feel like it gives them ammunition. Ammunition. Well, yeah. I don't think we should look at it in a way that we behave that way because I think those happen in other ways. Those are people who are prejudiced and are looking mm -hmm. for any opportunity to support their prejudices. Mm. Unfortunately, and I agree. this kind of to feel it. And but, I agree, and yeah. I agree. But let's not also pretend like these prejudiced people don't have platforms and don't have power. Piers Morgan, you know, I find that man to be highly abhorrent, but he's got one of the biggest platforms in the UK, highly prejudiced man. And a mm. video like that, he will use to no end. What's that of a racist white woman, Katie Hopkins? They were used mm -hmm. to no end. I feel like as much as it's not fair, because when other or white people, to those white men are really the only ones that are not stigmatized by what the rest of their group do. Every other minority, every other group of people, even white women do not benefit from that same privilege. You know, as much as it's not fair, it is a reality. And I feel like we should all be conscious of what we are fighting for. And I feel like even if you say I'm not part of the fight, I'm not part of the movement, I really don't care about Black Lives Matter, da, 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 I feel like you, you should really right now not be doing that much to detract from it. And I really feel like those men did a lot. That um, I know you might not agree with me, that's fine, but let me read you some of the comments. Black Lives Matter on the video on YouTube. Black Lives Matter, question mark, question mark. What race are they? Enough said. Inbred. Um, makes you proud to be British. This is what happens when you watch too much love and hip hop. Like, whether or not we want other races to see this as a race thing, when white people watch this, Asian people watch this, Indian people watch this, they are going to see our race. Whether or not we say, well, other races fight, da da da. da. When other races watch this, they are going to see our race. They're not going to be able to separate and just say, well, it's good. And it's not fair, but it's the truth. And we need to, as a, a community, be conscious when we're fighting for so much that these sort of things give our opponents the ammunition. It's not fair, but they will use it against us, and we know they will. Um, yeah, yeah, I, th I feel like that kind of message would only land on people who, who are of a certain level of education or certain certain level of morality um, and 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 kind of development. Yeah, it's it, sh it should be this. You you want people to represent the community better. Um, unfortunately, I just think some people are just they might have heard Black Lives Movement. They they're just not in it. Um, they they're not really for it. Um, also, how do you represent it? There's no defined route. I mm. feel like everyone kind of has their own um, expectations or views of what the movement's about. Um, it's a very loose movement. Unfortunately, I think things like that will continue to happen. So if we think that that is going to be an issue that's going to kind of hold back the movement, then we have to be prepared for the long term um, because those kind of instances, I've been in events and promotions, they will happen, and they will happen again and again. Um, maybe yeah. not that level of violence, yeah. um, or it could be even the worst level of violence. Depends on the individual involved, basically. Um, if they're gang members, if that's the way they behave normally, or the context of the situation. Do you think that it is right to hold each other accountable? Like, in my mind, if some of those men had been like, yo, bro, it's not that deep let's go outside. If two of the men in one of those groups is not that deep, let's mm -hmm. go outside. This is not a good look. If, if we were ready to hold each other accountable, do you think that that could actually change? Because I know you're saying that it's not going to change, it's going to keep happening, but perhaps we can reduce the scale at which is happening by having these conversations and holding each other accountable. Mm, to a certain degree, yeah. I think, um, to generalise a little bit, they say uh, birds of the same feather flock together. It looked like they were all of the same feather. 
Uh, <laughs> 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 So uh, in that situation, I don't think we're going to be seeing anyone there who's going to be level-headed um, <laughs> to try and keep the, the mob from behaving like the mob. Um, but yeah, like I, I, think, I think a good, a good sign of a good friend or someone who actually cares about you is not just someone who decides to fight with you, but it's actually someone who prevents you from getting into a fight. But anything can happen in a fight. They were all arrested, Abe. Eight of them. Right. They all looked like they were all involved. There, were, there was no. Right. There was no all of them. Yeah. And it, like, how is that going? If they all have jobs right now in the hmm. corporate world, how is that going to affect their jobs? How is that going to affect their future? You know, sometimes sit back before you react. I could, I could be wrong, but my my feeling is that they don't have jobs in the corporate world. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I, I, could, I could be wrong, but I don't think drug dealing think, is getting you into. I just think a level of I just think a level of common decency and training just doesn't appear there. But they didn't look like gangsters, Abby, and I know there's typical gangsters. How old were they? Huh? They How were about twenty five. Yeah, they don't have to look like gangsters. Were they all wearing Gucci and Armani and all the expensive stuff and buying yeah, champagne? They look well put together young men they weren't sagging trousers no flat caps i know it's a terrible stereotype but yeah. these look like men that have lived outside of the hood they knew the dress code to get into a venue like this they have some sort at least some semblance of sounds history. like sounds like they came in as wolven sheep clothing basically do you know what i mean <laughs> you know it's exactly. Anyway, um, it's not a good look, uh, and hopefully they get to reflect on it. Basically, like what you're saying, lots of people in black community will say, hundred percent. Um, I, I, do you know what I mean, definitely. Um, it, it, it is not a good representation. Um, it plays into the same expectations uh, of violence or fighting of young black That's men and white people. Stereotype. And white people will against. justify. White people will justify stop and search. Um, the other day, I think um, Chris the Dick, who's um, the police, uh, head of police for the Metropolitan Police, was saying 22,000 searches for black men during lockdown, um, which is a lot. <laughs> mm. And <laughs> um, only 20% led to arrests. Exactly. 80% were nothing. But it's, these kind of things will perpetuate those things so that even if in general there's nothing there, people will still be like, you never know. Yeah, you know I mean, and that you never know is what pushes those numbers higher. You know, I'm definitely going to round it up, but I, I just on the point that we're making about white silence and white people speaking up more. Yes, you're right. It's one thing to apologize, and unlike you, the apology does make me feel a little bit better because I feel like they're acknowledging that my struggle is different from theirs, and they're acknowledging their white privilege, and they're acknowledging that what happened to me was not acceptable. So an apology does make me feel better, but definitely not as much as my white friends standing up and saying absolutely not, this is not okay and calling that person out. So yes, I think we can definitely argue for more white people to stand up, pull up and show up. But I feel very much that you can't say white silence kills and white people doing nothing is, um, you know, actually what action that they're actually contributing and they're not saying that black silence also is damaging and black people doing nothing to address when you know we're doing things wrong is not also complicit in it you can't ask white people to fight for us if we're not willing to actually fight our own when they're doing things wrong you don't agree <laughs> No, 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 no. Do you know what I mean? We've, we've, got, we've danced around this point a lot. Do you know what I mean? I think I've said enough from my side, but I'm actually, I, I've actually got work to do. Okay. <laughs> In my mind, but, I'm just thinking like... Yeah, me I'm too. I'm meant to be going... I'm meant to be going to sorry. I'm meant yeah. to be going to sorry right now. But um, so I'm just going to like cap this off, guys. Um, I know some people will agree. I know some people will disagree. But I love the fact that, like, when I sit down with you, you know, it's always, like, very respectful. You share your opinion. I share mine. Whether or not, like, I've convinced you that in the fight for racial equality, Black men are not doing as much as Black women, I don't know. But we've been able to discuss it. That viewpoint is already out there. I do believe Black men need to do more. But yeah, I think, I think, I think if, if, if women are saying that they, they can't see or they can't feel the impact of what black men are doing, then there's room for improvement. 
Definitely. Okay, I'm, I'm glad that you feel that way. So we're going to leave it there, guys. Obviously, sign up in the comment section, share your opinions, but be respectful because my finger is ready to black. So thank you. Oh, lastly, before I leave, can I just get your thoughts? Because a lot of people are saying I shouldn't have any opinion about black men or the black community because I date outside of my race. Um, do you feel like I can't defend black men or criticize black men whilst I'm dating a white man? Well, that go do anything. You've got black brothers, do you know what I mean? Your exactly. dad's black. Sounds silly. Um, okay. That's my bit. Glad to hear it. All <laughs> right, love you. Catch you later. All right, bye.